This is the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. I'm Andrea Rohn, and I would like to tell you something about it. The New Orleans Center for Creative Arts is a unique career education program of the New Orleans Public Schools, a three-year commitment to creation in the arts. When man creates, he affirms his individuality and his humanity. The New Orleans Center for Creative Arts is dedicated to that spirit. The program is open to talented high school students at the sophomore level. The students are selected through an intensive auditioning policy from the public schools around the city. A student will be chosen for his or her special ability in music or dance, drama or the visual arts. Once so designated, the students then attain their academics at their respective home high schools and take all elective credits at the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. The center aims at setting the creative imagination free through the mastery of art disciplines and the acquiring of technique. The individual student curriculum is developed through a range of daily classes, workshops, and studio opportunities. The visual arts program introduces students to the basic concepts and techniques of image making. On one such occasion, guest lecturer, Mrs. Irene Corey, internationally acclaimed theatrical designer, worked with the students. The lines have directions, right? If it moves, it's got a direction. It's either going to go straight, or it's going to go curved, say, or it's going to go at an angle. So we've got line, we've got shapes, we've got texture, we have form, like this, and we have color. Those are, those are the biggies, those are some of the main things. So that's really what you're working with. Reaching out for something. Mm -hmm. And I feel like grabbing it with one hand and just reaching it still for the other hand. Mm -hmm. All of this look like it just branches out. Yeah. It's not that's too neat either. No, it's yeah. there. The kind of explosion that's happening here. Yeah. Okay. I like the color and the way it cuts. You put that on top and then get another thing happening there. This might come on down in here. And this could become a necklace. Or a <laughs> About it. No special hair. <laughs> I was trying to make that out of hair. That's going to be hair. But do we have anything else? I wonder that could have made hair. It's like you had hair stringing down that way, wouldn't it? I think this is a nice line coming around here. I kind of like the big foot. It's like the, uh, you know, the Peter Max design, so the seven up, Oops. Yes. you know, that yeah. forced perspective. So it comes out really All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started out with a piece of dried bark, and most of my figures started from that. This one, this one, this one. Started from just a plain outside figure from that. Then I started to get in, into more detail, like the hole from here to, to here. And for this part, I just turned it over, and I used just this part here, and came out to be sort of like an old woman seated in a chair. You know, people always think that an artist is a really strange person, but an artist is just you and me. His own difference is that he can see, and he uses his eyes, and he looks, and he sees, and he digests, and he shares what he sees. And that is why we can all be artists. But first, we have to see before we can share. So I've shared with you, and now you go share with other people. All right, we're going to um, check through the book and see one of the animals, choose one of the animals that we'd like to make up. And um, I think I really would like to do a rabbit. When I'm designing these makeup charts, I always have studied the animals in the beginning. That's, that's the, the main thing, to, to know and understand the animals' faces and features before you do the chart. And then you try to simply choose the salient or the dominant characteristics of the animal and uh, translate that into the, the thing that's needed in the makeup for it. All right, we're, um, we've filled in this area here now with our lighter shade, and we will come back and do some highlights in this, trying to keep lighter colors in the areas that we want to project so that in order to create the illusion of the nose and the chops coming forward, we use a light color, and the other areas we want to push back, we use darker tones. And you get three little ones up here where those whiskers grow out. 
And at that point, you are a finished rabbit. Other than that, it's up to you to go to the zoo or wherever and look up a rabbit and find out how he moves and how he twitches his nose and how he eats and what he does. And then you can be a rabbit. Music classes include studies in composition, theory, basic music skills, instrumental and vocal performance. And what we're gonna do is just play it in four bar phrases if you can. I'm not gonna give you any kind of a tempo. I'm going to just play you an introductory passage and then I want you to be as free as you can when you do it, okay? those dominant progressions from uh, C minor 7 to F7 on the end. Okay, try again. Slowly, yeah, with the fingering, like by switching the first in. Okay, just don't rush it. Just take it easy, because it's not really very fast. You're trying to pick up the tempo when you're doing it. All right, shall we try it again from uh, letter D? Watch the imitations on the 16th notes when we come to it. All right, letter D, one, two, three, four. Look at the text, it's a fairly happy text. It's got to be made much lighter and a little bit faster. We should all have to prepare and be for the face of all people. I get it. the focus of the theater program is on basic actor training. Studio and classwork are devoted to voice training, movement, improvisation, and dramatic literature. Uh, I may coach her on the scene, but I'll have her do an introduction just the way it'll be under performance conditions. Okay, it's a work session, remember that. Okay, go ahead, Cynthia. I don't know why a thing like this has to start up anyway. A man like you, Ought to know better than to come pushing in here. Find a neighborhood like this. After all, right is right. What? You're big. It's got to be big. Look away from him on that right is right. You finished your little spiel, you think. You know, you've, you're, you're ending, you're convincing. Let him hit you with that. Get out of my house. And you, you know, imagine you're being told to get out. Okay? It doesn't please you. Right. After all, right is right. What? Well, I never. You don't seem to know what I've done for you, Mr. Blake. Well, I at least think you'd have the decency to thank me. 
I might have expected this, though. People like you. All right. Now we'll go to your reactions to the scene. Well, I think she should have built more pressure. I mean, it didn't seem as though she really was telling him off. I mean, she wasn't scaring him enough. I mean, not scaring him, but telling him to really leave. She seemed like she was just saying, get out of here, instead of just, you know, okay, going More straight. pressure, a uh, yeah. little more anger. Yeah. Okay. Her projection was low. She, she didn't talk from here, she talked from her throat. And that way we couldn't hear what she was saying all the time. I thought that she took Joe over very well, you know. I saw Joe and to me it looked like she saw Joe too. Her movements could have been like an older person. Okay. She would, she would make movements like this. And she's totally comfortable in the chair. When a guest is available to augment the staff, the students profit immensely as was this appearance by Michael Henry, one of the country's leading mime artists. Okay, now remember, what's important here is not the movement, but the movers, that's us. Who is moving, how we're moving, the fact that we can feel ourselves moving. So first start and get a good, strong awareness of your hands. Now of the whole of your arms. As we move simply and slowly, Sense every inch of that movement. Let them come up slowly, easily, and feel them. I'm interested in learning to live in the movement, to be very aware of what I'm doing. I let it go down slowly so that it's not two sticks moving, not dead things, but it's my own live, live arms. Put all of your attention on your right arm. Sense it, feel it. And now just the right arm. It's floats up. Let the right arm come up, slowly feeling it every inch of the way. Let your head come up, feeling your neck and your face. And now let them both come back down easily until I can learn to be peaceful, to be calm, to live in what I'm doing. Now again, we're interested in the mover, not the movement. Get that movement. There it is, easy. And I sense it going this way. And very calm, so it's very easy comes down. The other hand is a little different. It comes, starts the same, comes up. It goes this way first. Then it goes this way. And then it goes this way. OK, let's do that one again. It comes up, feel it. Then it goes straight up. And then it falls over. How can I get both of the arms going? There. In the pursuit of cultural life, there are multiple opportunities for the arts to interact, to influence and enhance one another, to merge and to be transformed. The New Orleans Center for Creative Arts offers just such opportunities. For example, the dance curriculum seeks to develop in the young dancer the strength, poise, style, and technique needed to become an outstanding dancer. Supplementing the existing faculty with guest artists from various specialties in short or long-term residencies, the center is able to present to the entire student body, in this instance, one of the leading choreographers in the modern dance idiom, Murray Lewis. Everyone likes to dance, particularly young people, but I guess that's because they're young and their body is still forming itself. They have lots of energy and dancing is a great pleasure. But aside from just the pleasure and the fun of moving, there's always a way of living that comes with dancing. The good sense of well-being, the posture, the sense of what a person really is and what a person really looks like, all these things come to the fore when one dances. Because you see, the body doesn't lie. The body does the way you feel. And if you're on top of things, then your body's on top of things. So that learning how to talk with your body, and particularly learning how to listen with your body, that is listening to yourself, you can understand a great deal about yourself. The dancer's training always considers these kind of things. That is, you have to discover that you have a head, two arms, legs, and you also discover that everyone around you also has the same equipment. And that also makes you part of a large living pattern. No one is very special from each other. 
we're different only because of what's inside of us. That is the way we feel and the way we think. But physically, we're all the same. Center for Creative Arts is a special learning opportunity in creative development. Its arena, the arts. Its participants, the youth of New Orleans. Its goals, individual excellence under the tutelage of dedicated professionals. Okay, I want you to do a machine. You'll start with silent pattern and sound. You'll all join in, relating to his sound and pattern, trying to make a giant machine. The purpose of this is to give you an idea of tempo, an idea of movement. Stay with him though. He is the leader. You all follow us, okay? Michael, give us a sound and a movement. 